Hey everybody, welcome back to another LEGO unboxing video and also a room vlog. Today we're going to be unboxing all of this LEGO and also talking about uh, some of the changes that are going to be made to the LEGO City because, bam, there's some parts in this order which I'm pretty excited about. I've been waiting for those for quite some time, so why don't we start with the parts? It's nothing too crazy, but still the excitement is real because now I can add those 2x4 printed tiles to my bicycle lens. Yeah, because now we have the 1x4 plates and also the 1x4 tiles and also some 1x1 one one bricks in dark azure. With that said, I just went through my printed tile drawer, well, drawers, and I don't know where I put those. I don't see them in here. I know they were in a bag, so I'm going to have to locate those. That's the problem when these orders come, like, what feels like months apart. I can't even find them. Is this one of them? No, that's definitely not a bicycle lane tile. They're somewhere in this part's inventory, though. I just put them somewhere special so I wouldn't lose them. And now I don't know where they are. So in addition to that, I got all of these, which is pretty hyped. I think there's like 40 of them in here. And I need these to update my roads because the crosswalks in my roads don't really make sense. When I added the bicycle aid, it sort of avoided the need for this crosswalk. It doesn't really make sense. And in fact, there shouldn't be a crosswalk there in general because where are they going? There's, there's no sidewalk. So I need to replace that with one of those, which actually don't come in the road plate packs. And same with this one here, because that once again does not make any sense. And there's actually different examples of that all throughout the Lego city. But in addition to that, there's things like this. This crosswalk just lines up with the bicycle lane, which doesn't make sense. In order to move this right here, I need to use one right there and also one right here so I can put the zebra stripe right there. <laughs> it's not as easy as just moving it and making it line up with the actual sidewalk to sidewalk. So yeah, I need to go around and fix all of my roads. It's going to be relatively difficult, not really that fun. I guess it's not going to be that difficult actually, but it won't really be that fun, but it'll be very rewarding in the end. There's another one that doesn't really make sense. I've got to go around and put like 40 of those all throughout the city. I guess I'm just like famously bad for misplacing stuff. It's not a good trait to have. Those two by four printed tiles have got to be somewhere like in my tile drawers, in my printed bins. I have no idea where they ended up. So that is not good. Like you think I would put them with the tiles or with the printed pieces or in the overstock or maybe even with the extra bicycle lane modules that I have made up in this plastic container, like you think they would be in here, but for some reason they're not. Okay, I found them. <laughs> yes, that makes sense. They're with the roads. So there was some logic behind the reasoning. Oh, there we go. I found the bicycle tiles. Whoo, crisis averted. So who remembers the vlog when I was just going around the Lego room, cleaning things up, and I discovered that I'm missing my Helm's Deep minifigures? That is still the case. I still have not stumbled across those. Where could they be? They're somewhere down here. <laughs> I just don't know where they are. Okay, I'm gonna show you how I embed this tile in the bicycle lane. It's actually very easy. Just take a one by four tile and a one by four plate in that dark azure color. And we're gonna pop that on the bottom studs that are open there. And these are just like right off my road extenders. And then we're going to take two one by four plates and pop it on the top like that there. Now you're going to take any random tile and pop it on the four studs that are available right there in the center. And then we'll take this bicycle lane tile and put it on a plate, any color, doesn't matter. And we'll just pop that right in there and it just floats. And then we can take our bicycle guy and he's like, yep. This is the bicycle then. Perfect. Hey, how you doing, lady with the yellow umbrella? Now I can just be like, bam, and bam, and ka-chow. Get in there. There we go. <laughs> However, with that said, I removed a lot of the holes when I redid my LEGO City layout, and I think there needs to be more like bicycle lane print pieces throughout the city. So when I fix up my roads using all of those unprinted road plates, the eight by 16s, I'm gonna go ahead and add more of the bicycle lane print pieces. To be honest with you, at this point, I'm not really in the mood 
to rip apart all of my roads because that's a pretty big project. Replacing all of the uh, zebra crossings, adding those bicycle lane print pieces, and also adding crosswalks to all of these one-way roads, like this one-way road right here, and the one-way road over here in front of all of the modular buildings and over by the amusement park do not have crosswalks. So that all needs to be adjusted and I may as well take care of all of that in one swift swoop. All right, now that we're done with those parts and we know what they're gonna do in the LEGO City, it's time to unbox some of this other LEGO which was sent to me by the LEGO group. Here we go. This one here is a set that Jose is pretty excited about and it's for the 100th anniversary of Disney. This one is Agrabah. So here's Agrabah built. Sort of a strange dimension. It's 20 studs by 18 studs. I guess it's not really that strange, uh, but it is plate. It's got the black tile border and then these like modified plates going around the whole thing, sort of framing it and containing it. I really like this staircase here. That's probably my favorite building technique found in this build. It's really neat because those pieces of the stairs are actually just sort of sitting there. You can see you can just stack them. Like right now we're taking six of them and stacking them loosely on top of each other. And then we actually lock it in place with a uh, bracket. So the last one just holds them all in place. So they sort of can move a little bit and they make a neat sound when you rub your finger on them. <laughs> then we have the uh, front entrance. We also have the magic carpet and the lamp. Sort of the wrong scale though, like that lamp is mini fig scale, right? We also have Jasmine's window there. And then these towers were a lot of fun to build as well. I'm gonna call them towers. I don't know the actual architectural name for them, but that was a lot of fun to build. I've got the page bookmarked here. This is the large one on the top. Uses uh, snot bricks. And then some of those like gold curved slopes, which I really like as well. Those colors are just really nice. And then uh, all of these ones here with the dishes, you can see they're, the dishes are fed onto the bars. So those are just a neat construction and the way that all came together was pretty cool. Uh, there are some things that are lacking. Once again, I think that this set should have came with at least one minifigure, maybe two, like Aladdin and Jasmine. I think that probably would have made sense to give us two minifigures with this, especially when you take a look at the other ones. Like the mini Disney castle, it came with a Mickey Mouse minifigure. Steamboat Willie came with two minifigures. You got Mickey and Minnie there. And then the Peter Pan and Wendy actually came with three minifigures. And it also came with this printed tile for the Disney 100. With that said, I said that this set was for the Disney 100, but it's not marked as such on the packaging anywhere. I do like the overall construction of it. It retails for $50, it has 506 pieces. So I guess it's not too bad. That is Canadian dollars. So it's gonna be cheaper for Americans due to the exchange rate, of course. There are some good building techniques like the uh, snot techniques right there to get those plates on their side. All sorts of different slopes and modified plates in there and just some great part usage. And I love the gold elements. Anytime there's gold in a build, I'm pretty excited about it. But yeah, I really like those stairs. The fact that you get the magic carpet and the lamp is pretty cool as well. And also Jasmine's balcony or window there, which actually is a print piece. It was actually pretty easy to make space for it though. I just jammed Agrabah on this shelf here with all of the other small Disney stuff. My end conclusion is that it's a good set, but I wish there was one or two minifigures just so it was similar to the other Disney sets at that same sort of scale, like that Disney castle, and also Peter Pan and Wendy's flight over London. There we go. Nice little update there for the Disney shelf. Now this set right here is going to fuel another project in the LEGO City, which I'm pretty hyped about. In fact, I think I'm gonna start this project maybe after I'm done recording this video or maybe tomorrow. I haven't quite decided yet. Here in Canada, it is Thanksgiving. Yeah, here in October, pretty exciting stuff. But this is the downtown set. Now I've already received one of these, but my plan is to use two of these massive Lego city sets. In fact, it's the largest Lego city set that has ever been released. I plan on using this set and the one that's already built in the Lego city to double the size of it and make a uh, 32 by 32 modular building that's double sided. So it's two 32 by 32 modular buildings. And then there's going to be the uh, 
pedway that's actually going to connect the two buildings. So this is the Lego City downtown set. I did a full overview of this set in a different video here on my channel, but my plan is to make it two full base plates, one on this side of the street and one on that side of the street and have that pedway connect the two buildings. How cool will that be? Yeah, so that is gonna be pretty cool. I cannot wait to start that project because I think that building looks very modern and it's just going to add a different sort of element to the Lego city. And I'm excited to sort of remock. There's a fly in here. I'm like, Heisenberg, get out of here. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I'm excited to start that remock and just sort of experiment with some of the parts from my inventory and also the parts from the second set to blow it up. So this is the largest of the sets that we're gonna be unboxing today. It is a beast. Here we go. Oh yes, it is the Batcave Shadow Box. This thing is huge. I've been eyeing this up for quite some time and I've wanted to add it to my Lego DC collection for quite some time as well. It has 3,981 pieces. That's 19 short of 4,000 pieces. It is a monster. Look at this beauty. It's sort of hard to make out the set in the all black box, but I'm pretty sure Batman would approve. It is the Batman Shadow Box the snazzy Batman logo in the bottom right corner, and also batteries included, so there's gonna be some sort of light brick in there. We've got all our minifigures out front of the Batmobile. Quite a few minifigures in this huge set. Like, look at that box, it's massive. The back of the box features the Batcave opened up where you can see all of the interior details and also the parking spot for the Batmobile and like the cutout of like the cave, right? And then also the dimensions of the set and all of the different moving features and functions that are found throughout the Batcave shadow box. So everybody, there we go. Pretty exciting times here in the Lego room. We're gonna be updating the roads. Yes, finally, pretty excited about that. It's gonna be a task, but it's gonna be pretty cool. Also, I get to experiment with doubling a Lego city set. I've never like doubled or modularized a Lego city set. So I'm pretty excited about that. Like I've done lots of the creator three in one stuff and I've been specializing in doubling a lot of the modular buildings. I've got some exciting plans in regards to that soon as well. Like I'm gonna reveal them soon. Whew. Let me tell you, yeah, that project's gonna be pretty cool. The modular buildings are about to get an upgrade. I think three of them are. Yeah, working on it. Also, we uh, updated uh, the Disney display and pretty soon we're gonna be adding a bat cave to the Lego room. I think it's the best bat cave that has ever been released. Yeah, I gotta build this too. When am I gonna get doing that? Right away, I don't know. So stay tuned for my uh, thoughts and reviews on this and I'll probably build this live as well here on the channel. Thank you so much for coming on by. Please remember to like, subscribe and stay tuned for some more great stuff and have yourselves a fantastic day. Farewell.